Greetings, unsettled souls! <laughs> Tis Sam I be the Angie doing political commentary for the media speaks. Forgive me if I look a tiny bit in the shadows, as it were. Wouldn't you know what? I'm gonna fire VLC if it does it again. Wouldn't you know that the moment you go live, your third light goes bye bye? So. Christelle, say hello, Christelle. Hello. Is diligently fixing the the light that is to be over there. But never a better time for me to remind you that it's listener supported. There's a light above me, a light over here, and there should be a light there. And all of that is paid for by you. Actually, if it's not, it's paid for by me. So the correct views at hotmail.com. We are listener supported, and I genuinely appreciate your help. I'm going to go to screen share since I look like Boris Karloff in the shadow anyway. Um, this was disturbing. 10news.com, ABC. Craigslist ad threatens Orlando style massacre in San Diego. Now, a lot of people listening to this are either libertarians like I am. And thanks to Johnson, there's an asterisk by that, but I won't digress. Um, you're libertarian like I am. I don't really care what you do. It doesn't mean you're necessarily in favor of a certain lifestyle. It's just that you don't care if someone does it. Um, and then there is the the more right-minded, the more uh, Chris Christie, um, twisty Christie, as I call it, uh, Ryan sort of Gingrich Republicans, GOP, which really are constitutionalists but are against the whole gay thing. Well, you guys are all going to agree with me. And if you happen to be a gay or transgendered or whatever the flavor of the week title is this week, you are also going to agree with my commentary on this. So hit subscribe, hit share, and know that I appreciate it greatly. Police are investigating an online threat of violence to San Diego's LGBT community that read your next. On Tuesday evening, a 10 News viewer, it says, saw the post in the man-seeking men's section of Craigslist San Diego personal ads. That would be the gay section. He took a screenshot and sent it to 10 News before the post was flagged and removed. The post is titled, We Need More Orlandos, and they spelled it wrong, which proves right off the top that you're not that intelligent. Do I make spelling errors? I make more spelling errors than anyone. However, if I'm going to make this my great... Uh, uh, manifesto. I am certainly not going to have spelling errors in it. You know, if I'm sending a text to a friend about what they want to hear next when I'm a DJ, then I'm probably going to type whatever happens to come up on the screen. This is somebody's major confession to the world and they spell it wrong. So that starts you right away. But anyway, we need more Orlando's and it is accompanied by a photo of a hand firing a revolver with a bullet coming out of the barrel barrel. And now I can't talk, so maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe I'm glad I can spell. The post read, Orlando was long overdue. Cleanse your community of the filth that gives decent men gay, men and women a bad name. Those people are walking diseases, bug chasers, and thank God for AIDS and 911 and now Orlando. San Diego, you are next. Well, let me tell you what. Here's my answer to this. We have come a long way since we condemned this somebody. You're not going to get that light because Christelle is telling me she thinks the actual light died. So please donate. I'm making so much money. I'm not going to be able to replace it for a minute. Um, we have come a long way. Now, where am I on this? It hardly matters. So you get the 10-second version. I'm like every other male pervert. Two women are hot. Okay, but this is the difference. I don't go marching down the street carrying a flag that says Sam thinks two women is hot and you must accept it with a pretty rainbow after it. That which you enjoy, you know, keep to yourself. Well, even if it's normal, even if it, well, whatever that means today, whatever it's ever meant really, but even if you're quote unquote normal, I only do missionary. Okay, fine. The missionary people aren't having parades. Why? What is this infatuation with what it is that you like to do? 
I've already bored you to death with the 10 second description of what I like. What is this infatuation with marching down the street, parades of flight? But it's fine. We all have equal rights. And if they want to have a parade, should they be allowed to? Yes. I don't care. Wear a diaper, whatever freaky thing it's not. Gay people. LGBT, whatever you want me to call you. I'm going to call you gay. It's fine. Call me whatever you want. You usually do. Um, the Second Amendment is my amendment and your amendment. Take a gun. And when someone violates your rights to party however you damn well want in your club, they come through the door and they hurt you. And I'm going to say it. Your boyfriend, your husband, I don't care if you agree with it or not. They're going to hurt your husband. Shooting her. Shoot them. I'm dead serious. I'm sticking up for the LGBT community here. Carry a damn gun. Way to go, Christelle. It works. Well, not if she breaks it. Uh, carry a gun. Protect yourself. Protect your family. Protect you those you love. You know what? That's not going to happen under Hillary. Thank you, Christelle. That's going to happen under Donald Trump. It's going to happen under, even though I could kill him right now, not really. That'll actually be $4 because it didn't work the first time I tried it. High demand here. I'm going to take back killing because nobody knows what uh, uh, hyperbole is. I could really yell at Gary Johnson. No, I could not kill him. I could very yell at Gary Johnson right now for the way that he has brought the Libertarian Party. However, Gary Johnson, if you elect him, he's going to protect your rights to protect yourself. That's not going to happen with Sanders. That's not going to happen with Clinton. Uh, the Constitutional Party, I don't know who they're picking. It probably would under them. It's not going to happen under the Green Party. LGBTs, protect yourself. It's the Second Amendment. Welcome to the show. You and I can have a beer together. I might think you look funny in a dress, but we're going to enjoy the beer. And we're going to high-five each other. Welcome to the correct views. Guys, listener supported, as you can see from the screen share of Patreon, uh, do me a favor if you can, go there, help me, you can do whatever you want. Good thing is, thankfully, we know that I don't have to buy a light. It is interesting to know that I have nobody supporting the show yet, so you can be the first. That'll make you cool. Or really nerdy, which either way is really cool. Guys, I've got this coming up. Um, ISIS is testing chemical weapons on Christians. Now, this is where... I don't want anybody to zone out on me here. This is where something interesting comes into play. Because I'm not Hindu. I know very few things about Hinduism. If there was a massive slaughter of Hindus going on all over the world, that Hindus were being slaughtered in Canada, Hindus were being... I mean, I, I get it. There are certain people in their own region they've been fighting for years. But, I mean, let's say there was this massive worldwide attack on Hindus. I'd be the first to stick up for them. Massive attack on peaceful Muslims. I've said lots of things about the Islamic religion because I think it could be dangerous if read wrong. But if you're, if you're killing innocent Muslims, I'm going to be the first person in the world to stand up for that. Why is it nobody is standing up for the Christians? Nobody. Okay, I need to be a peaceful Satanist. If somebody, and that's the opposite religion, I'm Christian. I'm a terrible Christian, not a very good one. Uh, but I believe that Christ rose from the dead and he forgives us our sins. If that's how you define Christianity, that's me. If you define it bigger, then I'm probably in trouble. But my point is, I'd stick up for the Satanist down the street. I want them to tell you. You can tell by looking at me. I have friends that are Satanists. I have no problem sticking up for the peaceful Satanist. Why is nobody who shares my philosophy of acceptance, if not, uh, and it doesn't mean adherence, acceptance of other religions, why is nobody sticking up for Christians? Why are you not hearing about this anywhere but my show and the prison planet where Kit Daniels wrote this? Why is it only these smaller sites that are talking about this? Listen to this. The Islamic State, which has benefited from arms shipments from the Obama administration, that's going to be very important in a moment. Remember, 
the Islamic State, and this is not related to Trump, this is why it's going to be important, because we're going to be talking about him in a moment, nothing to do with Trump. The Islamic State, Kit Daniels, prison planet, not Donald Trump, which has benefited from arms shipments from the Obama administration, and there's lots of proof of this, that there have been a lot of uh, ammunition drops, food drops, hell, uh, medical drops that have been falling and being given to ISIS. They've been giving it to so-called moderates. These moderates are sometimes great people. These moderates at many times have been slaughtering everybody who isn't their form of Islam, even other Islamists, at astronomical rates. And nothing has been going on. And a lot of this has been because of the shipments that are given to these so-called moderates from Obama. While now ISIS is testing homemade chemical weapons on Christians. Why aren't you hearing about this anywhere, friends? Don't you think it's strange, even if you hate Christians, don't you think it's strange that there is a mass slaughter of people that believe that you should turn the other cheek and nothing is being done about it? Now, a lot of you listening to this are going to say that uh, Christians are the word hypocritical bastards, terrible. Okay, fine. That would be Christians in America. To some degree, that would be me. Okay, fine. We're talking about Coptic Christians and Syrian Christians. These are people who are far better people than I will ever be. These are people that are far better people than is very likely you listening to this will ever be. Maybe some, but... By and large, no. Um, these are Christians who practiced exactly what Christ taught. Nobody's sticking up for them as they're being gassed. ISIS has set up a chemical lab inside the Christian Iraqi city of Mosul after U.S. airstrikes targeted its weapons facility at a former university. And residents near the lab are suffering side effects associated with mustard gas. It says the terror group is known to harbor chemical and nuclear ambitions and is trying to manufacture weapons not only for attacks within Iraq and Syria, but also the West. Again, smaller area, smaller newspaper, the Telegraph reported. It is a special unit for chemical weapons research made up of Iraqi scientists who worked on weapons programs under Saddam Hussein. So basically, when we brought Saddam Hussein down, who was not a good person. Saddam Hussein was not a good person at all. More and more viewers, thank you so much. Stay with me. More, more and more we're seeing that Saddam Hussein was not a good leader, but he was good at keeping different factions of Islam from killing people within his own country. Uh, Muammar Gaddafi was not a good man, but I wish he was still around because factions of Islam got along they chose sometimes to segregate themselves chose not to but it was never enforced by the government and it stuck to them christians were left alone i'm sure there must have been hindus they were left alone but this is we're going with it today um after Gaddafi fell thank you hillary clinton we ended up with the the, the disaster that we see today so this matters a lot. We have Christians being gassed and nobody even doing so much as reporting on it, much less helping them. And the reason I gave the earlier segue is that Donald Trump, and I'm, we're going here to uh, the, the hell.com. Donald Trump has uh, tweeted a story claiming secret memo shows that Obama supports ISIS. This isn't a secret to anybody who has actually looked at what we already know. And if you look at the groups that are so-called moderate, you can look it up. Look up moderate, moderate uh, funding from America. The, the moderates that Obama is funding are the people that are overriding the entire peaceful world, including members of their own religion, who happen to, to believe in it even slightly in a different manner. Donald Trump on Wednesday tweeted a link to an article that claims, we're gonna, you'll see why, claims President Obama has indirectly supported, indirectly, again, he's not saying Obama is you know, blowing up the Pentagon. Listen to what is said. That President Obama has indirectly 
supported the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. That's ISIS. And standing behind his remarks earlier this week that Obama might sympathize with terrorists. Media fell all over themselves criticizing what Donald Trump may have insinuated about the president of the U.S., but he's right. The story from the conservative Breitbart website says that the State Department received a memo from the intelligent agent who claimed that Al-Qaeda in being a group that splintered off to form ISIS was one of the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. Based on the memo, the article claims that the Obama administration backed ISIS by setting up a program to train Syrian rebels fighting against President Bashar al-Assad. Now, the reason you tune into this show is because I make that complicated BS mean something. The president of Syria, that's Assad, the president of Syria has made an enemy of Obama. So Obama funded people in an effort to take down Assad. The trouble is, the people that Obama funded were sympathetic to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. And they took a lot of that support, funding, and weaponry to Al-Qaeda and ISIS and are now attacking us with it. That's what it means. Um, the Syrian opposition comprises dozens of different factions, as I just said. And the Obama administration has struggled at times to find reliable allies not tied to extremists. So, of course, the ones that they do pick are often, you know, oops, it turns out they were an extremist. The Pentagon has focused on betting the rebels to, who took part in the train and equip program, but stalled after the Pentagon was only able to train, it says, 150 rebels, and they were looking for 3,000. So, what you're seeing here is that uh, Trump wouldn't have put this out there if he thought for even a moment that it wasn't true. Because he knows that this is going to anger a lot of people. But he put it out there because it's true. Which is why a lot of people like me who are iffy on Trump have gone into the Trump camp. Especially after the meltdown of Gary Johnson. But um, we've gone into the Trump camp. We need to realize, hey, it might not be politically correct to say we're funding terrorists, but if we're giving money to people that are affiliated with ISIS, then guess what? We're kind of funding terrorists. Um, getting away from the whole terror thing for just a moment, I follow anything that has to do with we are living in a simulation because I, I believe it to be true. Uh, I believe it for a number of reasons. Some are big, some are small. For one thing... People say, how could God have created everything, the universe, everything? Well, if it's a simulation, he could have done it in seven days. Uh, how can you say that Rihanna has talent? Uh, none of that can be real. It seems painfully obvious that we're living in a simulation. You can laugh at the Rihanna thing. There's hard science behind it, such as, for those of you that are really nerdy, stay with me. Um, the way data is received from the curvature of the known universe implies that it is segmented into a matrix that is only known in terms of programming. Things are not constant. Things are blocked. Look at the two slits experiment. Um, look it up. It's real easy. Things are not as they appear to be. We know that things are not solid because of the two slits experiment. Things appear solid when observed. And Elon Musk here is saying, this is the independent.co.uk, independent. The chance that we are not living in a computer simulation is one in billions. And he is saying, because if we're not, then we would automatically write ourselves out. That doesn't make any damn sense. But the basis of what he's saying is true. In that so many religions and even atheism, even people that have no God, they are saying that things line up in a certain order. Well, people that have analyzed this order have found that it resembles only one thing. One thing. 
And that is a computer program. It'd be like a Sims character finding out that he's a Sims character. That sort of lines up to many religions, including the one I know to be true, Christianity. It doesn't break any existing rules here. And it explains a lot of things that weren't explained before. Right? Elon Musk has said that there is only one in billions of a chance that we are not living in a computer simulation. Our lives are almost certainly being conducted within an artificial world powered by AI, that would be God, and highly powered computers like the Matrix. The Tesla and SpaceX CEO suggested at a tech conference in California. Again, SpaceX are rivaling NASA in what they're going to be able to accomplish in the long term. Um, this just fascinates me because I believe so much of it. Um, he's Mr. Musk has donated huge amounts of money, it says, to research into the dangers of artificial intelligence. I think he's right on that. And that he hopes his prediction will be true because otherwise the world will end. I don't think that's true, but this is interesting. He says the strongest argument is probably us being in a simulation, I think, is the following. Forty years ago, we had Pong, two rectangles and a dot. That's where we were. Now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously. And it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtual reality and we'll have augmented reality. And if you assume that any rate of improvement at all, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. He said that even if the speed of those advancements dropped by a thousand, we would still be moving forward at an intense rate of speed relative to the age of life meaning we're progressing faster than we live. Since that would lead into games that would be indistinguishable from reality, then we could be played anywhere. And it would seem to me then to follow the odds that we are, that if we are, he's saying we can't be the base reality. We have to be one of many realities. That's what you believe when you're not smart enough to believe we have a creator. But even people like him are able to see that this is adding up. Now, again, I don't believe in it because of how far Pong has come. But that is one clear example of what I'm saying. He's got one tiny little dot in what I have the big picture of. And that is that there's only one way that any of this makes any sense at all. And oddly enough, that lines into what we know about programming. We were created. We are created beings, people. Uh, I got two stories left to get to. I do want to let you know, as you see on screen share here, Sticker Junkie. Go to StickerJunkie.com with great speed. Get your stickers made. You know you want sticker. You get a family reunion. Somebody you know is in a band. And maybe you just want to make somebody smile. So you take that selfie and you make 100 stickers out of it. You post it all over the place and see how long it takes them to see it. You can do that kind of thing extremely cheap by going to sticker junkie get your stickers made and on checkout type in correct views or the correct views you're going to get even a further savings because you're a listener of the show you can't beat that you really can't um guys this is interesting i'm going to get to the dumb of the day but i want to do just a wee bit of science i'm doing two in a row i do them every saturday 2 p.m eastern standard time on news from the science front at the uh saturday edition on the media speaks uh yahoo.com Scientists discovered three potentially habitable planets, which I would argue are in the simulation. So they do tie together. I told you they tied together, Christelle. You wouldn't listen to me. Um, Paris, an international team of scientists said Monday they discovered, disco, excuse me, discovered a trio of Earth-like planets that are best bet so far for finding life outside the solar system. The reason that's interesting is uh, the claim is that they have found uh, thousands of planets. They've narrowed it down to three, which could have life. Uh, the three orbit an ultra-cool dwarf star a mere 39 light years away and are likely comparable in size and temperature to Earth and Venus. And they reported this in a study published in Nature. Now, I know a lot of people uh, listening to this are probably saying, well, Sam, it doesn't matter. Life could have evolved in a billion different ways. We're only looking for life in one way. And you know what? I agree. Why? 
we're going to look for life the only way that we know that it can exist, which is largely carbon-based. It needs water, it needs air and oxygen. Now, it might have come in other ways, but we don't know how to look for it in other ways. So the three most likely places to have life in any way that we know or are able to look for it are these. This is the first opportunity to find chemical traces of life outside of our solar system, said lead author Michael Gillon, a, an astro, and he's an astrophysicist at the Uni of Liege in Belgium. All three planets, he said, had the winning combination of being similar in size to Earth, potentially habitable, and close enough to their atmospheres that can be analyzed with current technology, he told the AFP. The find opens up a whole new hunting ground for habitable planets, he added. Galal, it says, and colleagues collaborated on a 23.5-inch telescope in Chile known as Trapiste, a track se that tracks several dozen dwarf stars, neither big nor hot enough to be visible with optical telescopes. It says that they zeroed in on a particularly promising one, now known as Trappist one about one-eighth the size of the sun and significantly cooler. Observing it for months, the astronomers noticed that its infrared signal faded slightly at regular intervals. Of course, we've covered that before. It's the wobble. And they found it to be an exoplanet. That means a planet outside of our system. The innermost two circle their dwarf star every 1.5 and 2.4 days. Then they are hit with only four to two times the amount of heat generating radiation from the Earth receives from the sun. The more distant orbit of the third planet takes between uh, four and 73 days. That means it's got kind of an ob oblong uh, cycle to be that far apart from the sun. And it says, so far the existence of such red worlds orbiting ultra cool dwarf stars are purely theoretical. But now we have not just one lonely planet, but three, said co-author Emmanuel Jean, also from the University of Leeds. And he called the discovery a paradigm shift in the search for life elsewhere in the universe. So it's like it says hitting the jackpot because their proximity to Earth means scientists will be able to find out a lot more because these planets are so close to their star, but the star is so small, so the math evens out on whether or not they're going to get cooked, is what he's saying. We can study their atmosphere and composition, said co author Julian DeWitt a postdoc at the Massachusetts University of Technology, MIT. This is a jackpot for the field, he said in the statement, adding that it should now be possible to determine if they harbor life within our generation. That's awesome news, friends. Absolutely wonderful news, which is good because this is it. This is the dumpty of the day. I'm going to turn it down and just let it play out. Best song ever, I swear it is. I, I live this song. If you if you know what I mean. Um, this is from military.com. Carter, unmanned job titles are a challenge to make gender neutral. The question here is, how about we don't make things gender neutral? How about biology? Simple science defines it. I've got a lot of people listening to this that aren't Christian. Okay, fine. You don't need to be Christian to understand this. If you have a penis, you are a male. If you do not have a penis, you are a female. Now, I fully appreciate your right to wear a dress and call yourself a woman. That's fine with me. But you do not have the right to make me call you a woman unless I choose to. Because if you have a penis, you are a man. If you do not have a penis, then you are a female. It is not that hard. However... When you're dealing with the dumb of the day, as we are, it can be that hard. 
And again, it can really only be that hard if you're male, because I don't know how hard the clitoris get. Yes, I said it. As Christelle, how hard does the clitoris get? Oh, she's not going to answer. As the Navy and Marine Corps enter the final stage of a review mandated by Navy Secretary Ray Mabus, aimed at removing the word man from job titles in favor of gender-neutral alternatives, Defense Secretary Ash Carter said Thursday, he has been thinking about ways to apply the practice to the entire Defense Department, much to the chagrin and pain of anybody who has even a basic understanding of what is simple science. <sighs> Navy and Marine officials said that at all titles, including frequently used ones such as seamen and riflemen, are under review that began in January at Mavis's request. The move comes as all previously closed job titles across the Defense Department open to women. Therefore, a rifle woman, a rifle man, a rifle man, a rifle woman, women, women's, wife or rifle ladies. This is the dundee of the freaking day! Speaking to reporters at the Naval Undersea Warfare Center in Newport, Rhode Island, Carter called the move to review job titles appropriate and needed. Let me tell you what. It is not appropriate. It is not needed. It is the height of stupidity and capitulation to people that don't know whether or not they have a penis or more accurately don't want to accept it. And more accurately than that, want us to accept them not accepting it. I'm sick of it, friends. You're listening to the correct views. I have a penis and I'm a guy. If you wish to help me continue doing the show, then please do so at the correct views at hotmail.com because every penny you give to me would go to a better show, like having replaced that light if it had died, which you did. Yay. Um, also, if you're going to call Uber, do me a favor. Don't. Don't call Uber. Go to Facebook. Look up Change Transportation. They're going to save you money. And you're going to get a further discount on what you already saved, much like Sticker Junkie. You're going to get a further discount from Change Transportation because you listen to the show. Tell them, hey, I listen to the correct views. That guy's awesome. You're going to go ahead and you're going to get a discount. And you're going to get a better ride and a quicker ride than Uber. Good night, friends. God bless. And thank you for watching. Hit share. Hit subscribe. It helps me beyond what you would know.